Hey, what's going on? My name is Brian Fisher, and this is Just Tap Tasting, episode 107, a show here at the Wilkie where we taste some beers that we've just tapped. And this one's a really cool one. Uh, I definitely, we'll throw it up right here. It's got a really cool um, artwork, graphics. Uh, one of the things that this, this brewery um, is known for, I think both of them, there's two breweries involved here, and um, they are still water artisanal, um, although they're not quite a brewery, sort of. They're artistic, artisanal company of sorts that does their art through beer, maybe. And then there's Duggis, or Duggis, um, out of Sweden. Um, Stillwater, just a, a little bit of background on them. Uh, they started in 2010 and maybe one of the, the people to define somewhat of the, the craze that exists in American craft beer today, which is gypsy brewing. And what that is, is gypsy brewing is, you know, they don't have a home. And so neither um, Brian Strum, well, he probably has a home, but I mean, they, so they brew with friends. I think um, they, they brewed, you know, some 40 different beers, at, you know, at like 15, 12 to 15, I don't know, numbers, numbers. But they did, the, the crazy thing is like, they brewed a whole bunch of different beers last year at a whole bunch of different breweries, like 10 plus. Um, different locations that they were brewing at with friends and and so you see a lot of collaborations come out of of uh, Stillwater uh, because of just the nature of their business model and so they got started back in 2010 um, founded by a you know uh, uh, a DJ a guy named by by the name of Brian Strumke um, definitely got his start or became uh, you know famous to, I guess um, I don't really know I don't live in this world but in the electronica you know, music scene as a, as a DJ. And now he pours his creativity into to beers and other things and, and collaborations with uh, other brewers and artists. And it's really exciting. It shows up in the packaging. Um, it shows up in a lot of what Stillwater does. And um, it shows up in the glass. They do a lot of cool things. And this one, for sure, is one of those cool things. Uh, Duggis, I'm not really familiar with, that familiar with them, but I think they, they got going back in 2005 in uh, the west, west uh, side of uh, Sweden. Um, over across the way there in, in Europe. And uh, that's all I got about them right now. But this is the Stillwater Duggis uh, Tropic Punch. And um, Tropic Punch, it's a sour beer, 4.5%, brewed with mangoes and passion fruit. Um, and uh, just a lot of that, you know, tropical kind of uh, flavor vibe. A lot of, lot, of, uh, lot of fruity vibes here. Uh, on the, color wise, a little bit of a haze. The wild fermented, this one's with lactobacillus, a wild yeast strand, uh, you know, used in brewing and many other things used in, well, we won't get into that. It's used in uh, some, some interesting things um, for, for, for the people. Um, but this way it's being used to sour this beer. And uh, color wise, we have a little bit of a haze. It's kind of like a straw to pale, pale yellow in color. Um, a lot of the last few beers on the show have um, been kind of, in, well, I mean, this is kind of like a classic beer color, right? So that makes sense. But um, yeah, let's take it into the nose. Oh my Lord. This is like one of the coolest. This is like um, Sour Patch Kids. Sour, is that the, the sour candies that are coated in sugar? I think, yeah, that's what this smells like. Like, you, like I'm, it kind of takes me back to my childhood a little bit. Um, you know, you open up a bag and you... Yeah, some sour patch. Maybe you're at the movies or whatever, and you're like tossing them out to your friends and saying, "Oh, eat this one. It's crazy." That's what this smells like. It is a wild, wild nose. Um, so fruity. A bit of it, like a you know, like a tart acidity kind of showing up. Like that. Like that's what I can anticipate um, on the palate um, through what I'm getting here. That I mean, that's the the sour patch kid kind of vibe. Like you can, you, like my actually, I just got goosebumps because I. Until we're talking about this, I can actually, my tongue is starting to like salivate a little bit and, and in, in anticipation of the acidity and tartness and uh, sour for profile that I anticipate on this beer, the anticipation is over. Let's taste it. <laughs> This beer is so cool, so so fruity and acidic and um, intriguing. Um, I let it warm up a little bit, and it's not. It's actually kind of mellowed out a little bit. Like the first time I tried this beer, which was like right when we put it on tap, um, 
like yesterday or something, and it is uh, uh, quite a bit more mellow on like the tartness. Like the first time I remember like tasting it, I was just like, ah, like the size of your tongue, like kind of where that really shows up the most. Um, it's it's uh, special, really cool, really cool. I gotta have a little bit more. You guys gotta come in and drink this. This is this is special. It's really even if you don't like sours, although this is this is adventurous and definitely assertive. You should come try it because it's it's wild. It's really wild. So fruity and refreshing. This would be really good, like spiked with a little gin, little summer springtime beverage. I like it. Question of the day: What is your favorite um, European brewery? Classic, new age, like, you know, Duchess or, or, um, or Mikuler or, or a Tool or Tool, however you say that one. It's the T-O with the O and the slash and the L. Um, what is your favorite? I want to know. Jump in the comments below. Um, we, we appreciate you watching the show. We look forward to drinking with you real soon because it's a lot of fun to do. I think so. Cheers. Oh. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. I can't say subscribe, but you should do it anyway. <laughs> Cheers.